Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour. Discuss Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We are talking anything and everything real estate, as we always do on Real Estate Radio Live, providing you guys great information and education. I have a great show in store for you today. Mr. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services, is here. Tom, how you doing? Doing outstanding, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. And Tom, as you guys know, been on the show a few times before, always a good time, full of information, and uh, we got a lot to get to today. But before we do that, just a reminder for those of you guys just tuning in, always a couple different ways you can listen to the show. That is on the radio at KDOW 1220 AM. Or you can go online to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. And you can also find us on three different apps. You can download the KDOW app, the iHeartRadio app, or the RE Radio Live app. And if you want to listen to our podcast, we podcast every show now, and you can download those on iTunes and listen to us anytime you want. But if you want to listen to us live, we come to you five days a week, Monday through Friday from 3 to 4 p.m., and as you know, we are a live show, and we love to get your calls on the air. And if, if you ever wanted to call in, today is the day to do it. Tom is, has a wealth of information about the real estate industry and, and trends, so definitely give us a buzz. 1-800-516-1220, 1-800-516-1220. Or if you're bashful, you can text in to the text line. That's 408-630-0101, 630 All right, Tom. How you doing? Doing good, man. How are you, Mike? Doing good. And good. so give us a little bit, you know, some of you, some people that have listened before have heard heard you on the show before, but give us a little bit of background on Intero and where we're located at and, and how many agents we have and that type of thing. Yeah, sure. So um, Intero is headquartered uh, right here in Silicon Valley. Um, our corporate headquarters is actually probably uh, one, if not the only, certainly one of the only buildings uh, on De Anza Boulevard between uh, 280 and Stevens that's Creek. A, that's not Apple computer. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we founded Intero in 2002 before Apple completely went bonkers. Uh, right. After that, that's how come we're actually in that location, which is uh, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, so since 2002, we've grown our company to today. We're you know close to 80 offices, close to 2,500 agents. Uh, servicing, you know, the Bay Area, you know, um, but also, you know, up into Northern California, Nevada, Southern California, Colorado, Tennessee. So we've got I mean, we've got mm-hmm. offices, um, you know, all around the country, but you know, really, really strong uh, right here at home in the Bay Area. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny when uh, we're going to talk about the conference we went to a couple weeks ago, but when we were there, our name tag said Cupertino on it, and I. Every time I met somebody, they're like, oh, God, are you guys right near Apple? I'm like, actually, we we are. <laughs> We're literally across the street from App- Apple's main campus. Well, it's funny. You know, when you live here uh, your whole life or if you're from here, you don't realize what a big deal it is. But often mm-hmm. we get visitors coming from, you know, out of town to come yeah. visit us at Intero and from different businesses we are. And one of the places is kind of like going to Wall Street. They all want to walk over to Infinity Loop and right. take their picture in front of the yeah. Apple sign. Yeah, every time I leave the corporate office, I see people taking selfies out in the front, <laughs> you yeah. know, in the front of the thing. And it's just crazy over there. I, a real quick side story, because, you know, in real estate, uh, I had a friend that worked at Apple and I went and visited him one time. And, you know, in real estate, we usually dress nice. You dress nice yep. today. And she was like, don't dress how you normally dress when you come over here because you're going to stand out. And yep. so and so I went there kind of dressed down. And sure enough, it was... You were still dressed up? A little bit, you know, <laughs> even jeans and a collar shirt. I, I mean, I saw people with a kilt on. I saw, you know, sweatshirts, shorts. It was It's kind of crazy. It's different it from what we do at Intero, and, it is. you know, dressing professionally. So, hey, whatever works, I guess, right? It's working for them somehow. That yeah, is. Well, welcome <laughs> to Silicon Valley. You That's know? right. So speaking of Silicon Valley, we always like to talk about the market. And what's going on? So, what are you seeing? You know, you get a lot of information thrown at you. Uh, so, what do you what do you think is going on right now? I mean, we all have our opinions, but I want to want to hear what you. Yeah, have to say. I mean, I think uh, this year we certainly came out the gate. I would I would say probably a little bit slower than we did last year. Um, I think especially in the super high end luxury market properties, you know, over three, four, five million dollars, um, you know, seem to you know just not be you know. As hot as they were, I think. Why, big, why is that? I why think a big think? contributing factor yeah. is the stock market pullback. You know, ten yeah. percent. You know, um, I think you know it's not that those people can't afford to buy houses. It's just when their portfolios drop that much, I think they just get, 
you know, a little you know, uncomfortable, for lack of a better yeah. word. Um, I mean, the good news is, you know, the market's come back, you know, quite a bit over the last few weeks. And, um, you know, it, you know, if that continues, you know, I think that bode well, it bodes well for the housing market. Yeah. Um, it's all relative, right? Silicon <laughs> yeah. Valley, low end being under two million bucks, or you know, let's, let's, let's not call it low end. Let's call it the normal market. Yeah. Two million or from you know seven hundred to two million. That market, I think, has remained very, very hot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just still a, you know an incredible lack of inventory, especially in that price range. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you are starting to see which which happens, which isn't uncommon. We're starting to see a little bit. When you're getting some greedy sellers coming out on the market, you know, putting homes on the market on, you know, that you know either you know on busy streets or yeah. backing up to freeways or they have some other sort of issue with them, uh, they don't look stellar and yet they still put a price tag on them that you know uh, doesn't make sense. And yeah. so where those properties might have sold a year or two ago, maybe it would have taken two or three months for the market to catch up to them. Um, you know, we're seeing some of those sit on the market, but uh, overall, you know, rates are low, stock market continuing to pick up. You know, high tech's booming. She's just down the street coming here. Netflix is going to be moving in across mm-hmm. the street from uh, from Courtside, and um, you know, Roku moved into their um, their old facility just down the street. Yeah. So I, I'd say I'm optimistic about the year. To think it's coming out the gate just a hair slower than it did last. Yeah, it was definitely slower. I mean, I was talking with even we're going to talk about this market report that Intero is starting to put out, and you put on you know this one we have is January, and there's only about not even 500 single family homes in the entire county for sale up until January and then you know, we always talk about the Super Bowl and after that weekend is when it really picks up and it has pretty much it it's gone to over about 1000 active units in Santa Clara County but when you think about it about how many homes are in the entire county <laughs> And only a thousand of them are for sale. It's really, it's still not where we need to be. Well, again, put things in perspective. So, you know, in in the early '90s, um, you know, shortly after we'd gone through the savings and loan crisis, mm-hmm. there was the earthquake. Stock market kind of pulled back, and we were in a recession. And I don't know what the population was back in the early '90s, but obviously substantially less than it is today. Yeah. Um, obviously, not the employment. High tech wasn't anything like what we see today. Um, there was over 13,000 houses for sale. So when you consider yeah. the fact that there was probably, you know, half or maybe even less of that of units available for sale, you know, population, I'm not going to say it was half, but it might have been half, yeah. half the jobs and 13,000 houses yeah. compared to what it is today. <laughs> I mean, that even makes it more staggering. Yeah. Well, and then the other, the other thing to add to that is now we, we are a low number, but there's really nowhere else to, nowhere else to build anything mm-hmm. other than infill development and, and high rises and that a lot of what you see what's happening in downtown San Jose. So for us to think it's going to ever get back up to that, I, I don't think it will happen again. You know, I think right. that's why we, we project that it's going to be good around the Bay area for a while and, you know, particular with all the jobs that are coming here, Apple's buying up land left and right. Mm-hmm. So I foresee it being pretty good for yeah, a while. I mean, there's always ebbs and flows in the market. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, we're going to have a recession at some yeah. point in the future. It's just inevitable. And recessions are actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, we just don't want a depression like we had in 2008 right. and 9, right. you know, but recessions are actually a good thing. It's a it's a purging process, and things can't go up in a straight arrow forever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the one thing that I've discovered being in the real estate business for 30 years is, you know, there's never a bad time to buy real estate uh, or be in the real estate, you know, as an investor. Um, there's there's always going to be better times to buy real estate. Unfortunately, yeah. you never know when those are until you see them in the rearview mirror. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so um, again, combination of low rates, a you know, good job market. Um, you know, and, and like you said, you know, just a restricted supply of housing. I, you know, I'd be, I'd, I'm a buyer in the market like we're in today. Yeah. So let's uh, talk talking about the market and and what Intero has recently come out with the buy sell stay report. Mm-hmm. Talk about that for a second because this is a pretty awesome report that we're going to be coming out with. Well. We're going to come up monthly, but I'm not going to do a job for you, but go ahead. Yeah, talk about so, this you know, um, you know, as real estate agents or real estate companies, um, for those of you guys that are listening, you know, you get bombarded with, you know, materials from realtors all the time. Yeah. And so we really just wanted to create something that we felt, you know, provided value and really was actually something that people could use and not just be a brag sheet. And so we created the, uh, you know, uh, the market report, which basically – you know, it's just kind of our take on the market. We broke it down by different regions around the Bay Area. So 
Um, you know, we have the market report, you know, pretty much broken out for every single region in the Bay Area, uh, just given, you know, statistical information, homes yeah. for sale, prices, listings, et cetera, with a little editorial from us on um, just, you know, our you know, perception of, you know, where we've been, where we're at, where we're going, and um, just hopefully being able to try to provide some value to people out there that, you know, that are trying to make a decision. Should I buy? Should I sell? Should mm-hmm. I hold? Right? Yeah. And, and it's very high level. It's very visual. Yeah. It's not a lot of, it's not wordy. It's, you know, graphs and Picture. Well, so, hey, we are yeah. in, we are we are in probably there's probably more ADD people in the yeah. Bay Area than anywhere else on the planet. So it's like I don't know about you guys, but for me, if it's much more than five pages yeah. and it doesn't have lots of graphs, I'm in trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think people will like this. So if you do want to sign up for this, um, you can definitely reach out to me, um, and we can you know I'll give the information out at the end of the show. But this is a really great report. I've been sending it out to my database, and people have loved it. They, yeah, you know, and they uh, good. They really are enjoying it. So, um, so that is the buy sell stay report from Intero, and 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 again, just very high level, really nice report. Anything else on, on the you know the market you want to discuss today? Stock market. I know you watch a lot of CNBC and you yeah. know stock reports and all and all of that. I mean, your thoughts on any anything yeah, else? Yeah, you that? know, I'm I'm just you know I'm, I'm you know I'm pretty in tune with it. You know, um, just with regard to you know I have uh, CNBC or you know or Bloomberg running kind of in the background in my office all yeah. the time. Um, you know, I don't know that there's anything specific. I think you know it's you know uh, the election year, all of that. What stuff. do you think it's, that's gonna? What do you think the election is gonna? You know, how do you think that's gonna affect the market or what? I don't want to go too much into the political <laughs> side of it because we all have our But opinion. you want my opinion yeah. on who should be president? If you want to put it out Mike there. Mike D'Ambrosio. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You can call in 1-800-516 to vote. <laughs> all right. No. Uh, so uh, what do you think that's going to have a, you know, an effect? Because you've been in the business 30 plus years. You've seen elections affect yeah. real estate. So what, what what's going to happen? Unfortunately, I don't think there's a good choice. Um, let's, yeah. let's go with that. I would that. agree with that. Um, that, that. That's kind of a... You know, for lack of a better word, a very frustrating thing being American right now, and and, yeah. and just the the options that we have are just it's just it's almost like embarrassing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you know um, there's always a lot of people that put weight on you know who's going to be president, what's going to happen. You know, I don't think really anybody knows, um, mm-hmm. and I think it's too early to tell. Mm-hmm. You know, I think as uh, you know as they get as it gets narrowed down, and we know who. The Republican candidate is for sure. You yeah. know, um, I think we all know who the Democrat Democratic candidate is probably going to be. Right. And they can really kind of start boxing it out in in their debates, and we can hopefully hear a little bit about what their stance is. You know, uh, you know, on monetary policy and all that sort of stuff in the econ- economy. Then you know, we'll take it from there. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting ride. Yeah. <laughs> we got to take a quick break. If you uh, if you have any questions, one eight hundred five one six twelve twenty, or you can text in. 408-630-0101. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services in. I'm Mike D'Ambrosio. This is Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. 12.20 a.m. We have Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services in studio today. Love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions for Tom or myself, that's 1-800-516-1220, or you can text in 408-630-0101, 408-630-0101. This segment is brought to you by Giorgio's Italian Food and Pizzeria and Frankie, Johnny, and Luigi's, too. The best Italian food around with four convenient locations throughout the Bay Area to serve you. You can go to Giorgio's and FJLItalian.com for more information on their famous happy hour specials. So... Let's get back into it, Tom. In the previous segment, we were talking a lot about market updates, stock market. Even got a little bit into the uh, political race that's coming up here. But as a matter of fact, I just posted uh, you for president up on <laughs> Facebook. <just laughs> yeah, now. right. There we go. That that'll happen. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I, I had some fun in college that might might get resurfaced. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, so we're talking a lot about value. Thanks, Kevin. That's you're on point today. <laughs> Talking a lot about values in the Bay Area, and I actually read this article um, on Business Insider. It's a really good app. I, a lot of people out there they have really good articles um, on Business Insider, and this is the top uh, most expensive zip codes in the country. And I think there was only one state out of between New York and California. There was only one other state that had a zip code in there, but other than that, everything was in New York and California, most of which was up here. So I thought that was pretty interesting as far as most expensive zip codes go. Um, but 
to kind of transition, not that, not that we need help with values around here, but let's talk a little bit about what people are doing um, as far as helping their, their neighborhood value and, and helping their house value. And there's a lot of construction going on, a lot of remodeling. So talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah. So it's like you and I were talking on the break you yeah. know, a bit. I mean, there is, I mean, right now it's, you can probably drive around almost any neighborhood, I think, in, uh, in the Bay Area and you'll see, you know, houses either torn down or having massive mm-hmm. remodel going on. And, um, you know, and as, as you and I were talking, I think you know, I always get people that ask me, you know, when, before they remodel their house, mm-hmm. you know, where, you know, where is it good to spend their money and where is it not good to spend their money, you know, uh, with regard to where am I going to, you know, get a return on my investment, Yeah. you know, and I put money in. And I, and I think, you know, for the most part, it's, you know, um, you know, it's, it's pretty logical, you know, uh, the basics, bedroom, or excuse me, bathrooms and kitchens yeah. and, you know, um, you know, painting and, and basic fix up, you know, I think you always have to keep in mind, you know, the quality of what it is that you're doing based upon the neighborhood that your home is located in, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want, you know, you don't want to over improve necessarily your <laughs> home. You have to be a little bit careful, right? Um, you know, and just always remember there are certain things that you're going to put into your home that you're going to put in for your own personal enjoyment. And you have to remember there's a you know, a value that you, you know, a dollar value that you can't put on that, that it's yeah. just a, a personal value. And then there's, you know, a, a certain amount of value you're going to get back out of, out of the resale of the home. So. Yeah. I think the over improving part is huge. I remember we, we sell, I sold a Prestigio property mm-hmm. and Prestigio, for those of you, the guys that don't know is our high end marketing program that we use for certain levels of, you know, of value. Luxury of pro- homes, yeah. Right. Luxury homes and certain areas are different price points. But this one was in the Rose Garden, and it was set over 7,000 square feet yep. on a on a half-decent street. And it was difficult to sell. Even But through our marketing program, it eventually sold because we continued to market it for a while, and, and that really helped. But it was definitely a negative for people coming in there that are spending $3 bucks. And so over-improving, I think, is a huge point, especially in the Bay Area, as a lot of people can't find anywhere else – to buy, so then they go into a half okay neighborhood, and then they put this McMansion on it. You know, or it's like even it's, you can't, you know, it's like you can't, you know, you put a, you know, Viking stove and top of the line appliances and all of this, and then you put your house on the market and say that, hey, I want to get my money back out right. of all of those great appliances that I put into my house. Yeah. Well, you know, depending upon where your house is located, you know, you may not get the value back out of it. So you just have to be thinking, and not that you, nece- not that you shouldn't necessarily put them in, but you just need to make sure that the reason that you're putting them in, depending upon the situation, is for your own personal enjoyment first yeah. and resale second. They certainly will help the sale of your home yeah. and, and you know make it look nicer and, and potentially help itself for more money, but you may not get every nickel back out of it. Yeah. And then we talked a little bit about the drought, too. I mean, what are your thoughts on that and people yeah. getting a little lazy out there? <laughs> yeah, well, like you and I, I mean, I just, you know... You know, I think I think it's been an excuse for a lot of people just to take their foot off the gas and not take mm-hmm. care of the yards. And you know, look, and I'm I'm a pretty water conscious and, and and guy, and I try to do the best I can. So hey, I went through my whole house and you know switched everything out to drip and yeah. and you know and my yard still look beautiful. You right. Know, you know, uh, my lawns are nice and green and everything else, but. You know, a lot of people just kind of throw their hands up yeah. in the air and say, screw it, I'm not going to do anything. And so you've got weeds in the neighborhood. I think everyone just needs to always remember that you know, your house, good or bad, is positively or negatively impacting the value of your neighbor's home and all the homes in your neighborhood. Yeah. Excellent point. Definitely something everyone's got to remember every now and then. Yeah. So we've got to take a quick break. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services, is on today. If you've got any questions, 1-800-516-1220 or text in 408-630-0101. We've got a lot more to get to. I'm Mike D'Ambrosio. This is Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be right back. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services, is in studio today. If you've got any questions for Tom or myself, 1-800-516-1220, or you can text in 408-630-0101. And this segment is brought to you by Starburst Construction. They've been serving the Silicon Valley for over 40 years. They're dedicated to building award-winning homes that last a lifetime. You can visit them today at starburstconstruction.com. That's Starburst like the candy, construction.com. And speaking of the text line, one of the topics we wanted to talk about today, I got a message in about Zillow and Trulia. Um, And we always, you know, we've talked about it on the show before, 
Um, and I think that, so for those of you guys that know, Zillow is a home value site and it's and it got a lot of listing information on it. It's basically, and they also own Trulia now, yep, right? Yeah, they do. And there's all sorts of sites out there like that, Redfin and all these other... Realtor.com. Realtor.com. So, you know, where where are these sites going to go? Right. I mean, what is it, what's going to happen with it? I think in the beginning, realtors were really nervous about them trying to take over the industry and mm-hmm. automate the sales process like an Uber did with the taxi industry uh, or Airbnb with the hotel industry. But you and I were talking off air. It's like, you know, what we do as realtors on a day-to-day basis, I don't think could ever be automated. Yeah. The amount of stuff that we have to put up with, I mean, it's all part of it, right? But yep. we put up with a lot of different, a lot of different curveballs get thrown our way. And I just don't think a computer is ever going to be able to do that. So what are your thoughts on all that, Tom? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think, um, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, Zillow and Trulia and all these websites, you know, are portals to provide information to buyers and sellers. But, the, you know, the, the truth of the matter is really what they are is they're advertising sites. Yeah. You know, they are marketing firms. They're marketing. They're, you know, the... the you know the information that they provide on these portals, properties and valuations and all of that is really just a way to get you to come to come to the website so they can sell you stuff. Yeah. Right? Like any like any any website and or they can or they can take your information and sell it to somebody else whether it yeah. be a real estate company, real estate agent or you know God only knows who. I mean they I'm sure they've got, you know, um stuff built into that when they know when somebody's selling, they're probably selling information off to, you know, um, you know, places like Home Depot and Lowe's and, you know, and, and everybody out there, yeah. um, you know, and so people just need to recognize that, you know, ultimately the reason they do what they do is because they, they want your information yeah. uh, so they can sell you something else. So they want you to buy something else that somebody else who's advertising on their website. So that said, I think, I mean, look at I just get the Zestimate on my house too. Yeah, well, you have to. I right. mean, you got to check into it and see what but, but other people are looking at that. But here's what I can tell you: yeah. I, so I'm a real estate guy. Yeah. Um, I've asked numerous realtors what they think my house is worth, mm-hmm. uh, based upon the Zestimate that I have on my house, uh, and 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 what these other agents and I've asked numerous of them th- say my home is worth. The zest of my house is off by somewhere between five hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars. Oh man! Okay, yeah. so you know because you know the one thing that these websites can never do is it can't go inside my house and walk around right. and see what kind of things I've done yeah. to my home. They don't have backyard. algorithms for that. They don't. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like I mean, it's not like you and I were talking about. You know, yeah. a car in Minneapolis is worth. You know, a Tesla in Minneapolis, if they actually had them, but yeah. I don't know if they do. <laughs> but if they did, yeah. a Tesla in Minneapolis is worth the same as a Tesla. In yeah. California, right. because a Tesla is a Tesla is a Tesla is a Tesla, right? Yeah. Maybe they have different bells and whistles, but at the end of the day, they're all kind of the same. Every house is different. Yeah. Every buyer and seller's motivation is different. Yeah. Every little thing is different. No, I think it, it and it's, I think it especially rings true in the in the Bay Area where there's so many houses are different. Yep. You know, maybe in like the. Uh, I don't know, the suburbs of Chicago or something where their houses are cookie cutter. Or even look at like places like Arizona or, you know, Las Vegas, Vegas, you know, where they've just built these massive amounts of tracks of home and, and they really are a commodity. I mean, it's like every single house looks exactly the same way. You know, the reality is the estimates are probably be a little bit closer than that. But you, you and I both know being in this business, I mean, you can have, you know, uh, two houses that on the surface would appear to be exactly the same five, five houses apart. But one could be on the corner of a house, and the other one could be on the interior, on the corner of a street. The other could be on the interior yep. of the street, and that could be a ten to twenty percent difference in value, just even if everything else being equal. And and, and Zillow and Trulia and, and those other sites take that kind of thing into consideration because you just can't, you can't. Yeah, no, it's it's all good points. So there's our thoughts on uh, all those good websites out there. If you got any questions, 1-800-516-1220, or you can text in 408-630-0101. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate, is on. I'm Mike D'Ambrosio. Real Estate Services is in studio today. And if you have any questions, you got to get them in now on this segment, 1-800-516-1220, or you can text in 408-630-0101. We get a lot of traction on the text line. I guess people like that a little bit better (laughs) than calling in. But a lot of the topics you guys hear about today and and every week that I'm on are coming from you guys reaching out. So I really appreciate it, and we appreciate our listeners. And this segment is brought to you by Taps Termite. They've been serving the Bay Area for over 45 years. Taps Termite is committed to keeping your living area pest-free by using the newest and safest technology. You can call TAPS today for a complimentary inspection. That's 408 259 
5900. So, uh let's we wanted to take this segment to get into a little bit about what Intero does um and what's what a part of and social media and all sorts of things. We always have a lot to talk about when you come on the show, so it's always a good time. Um, but one of the things, one of the things I thought about today is when I came in, I was like, oh, am I wearing the right shoes? Because, uh, <laughs> Tom wrote a blog today about, uh, it was about, you know, the little things, right? Yeah. Making, the details, the in, details life. in life yeah. and shoes. It was just funny. So anyways, let's talk about the Intero blogs a yep. little bit. Uh, a lot of people might not know that Intero has di- well, go ahead and Yeah, and so, that. you know, it, uh, it, so we have, we have blogs that go out on a regular basis. We, you know, we actually have. I think three blogs that are written, uh, you know, one I write every Monday, uh, one that Alon Pinnell, the person, writes for us, the yeah. man, <laughs> writes for us um, yeah. on luxury and just the luxury his market. Good. His are really good. Yeah, and then we have one uh, that's done for us by uh, Tammy with uh, a company called Body Firm out of Los Gatos, which is basically on nutrition and health yeah. and fitness. Yeah, she's great too, yeah. And so uh, the blog's kind of, it's funny, you know, just, you know, kind of happened a little bit by accident. Uh, probably 15 years ago, I used to just try and do a little bit of an inspirational blog to the people that were working for me to, you know, keep them fired up to go out and do right. the activities that they want, they needed to do to be successful. And lo and behold, over time, I would get people, you know, forwarding them to other people and asking me to, hey, you know, can I get, a, can I get added to your list? Can I get added to your yeah. list? Can I get added to your list? And um, I just was doing it manually. You know, I didn't have any sort of a system to do it. I just mm-hmm. would add people to my list. And and uh, and then probably, gosh, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, um, we were approached by a marketing firm that says, "Man, you know, you should be, you know, you should be publishing those and yeah. making it more of a formal process." And so now we have over twenty five thousand subscribers around wow. the world to uh, what I write on Monday is called Monday Morning Mojo, which is an inspirational blog. Um, and, uh, you know, my blog's interesting because, again, it orig- originally was tailored towards, you know, salespeople, but it's not a sales blog. It's more no. of a life blog. Yeah. So uh, the most rewarding thing now is I get people, um, you know, telling me, hey, I'm forwarding to my kids in college and, and you know, et cetera. As a matter of fact, I even opened up the door. Um, I'm speaking at um, yeah, the college I graduated from, Chico State, oh, yeah. next month. Yeah, cool. Just, um, you know, just on, you know, success and life and business and and uh, and then we bolted on you know Alon's blog Alon yeah. uh, you know great writer and 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 does that uh, and then Tammy's blog as well and and really try and you know kind of cover hopefully you know all the equities of your life um, is really is really the goal not just for our agents and our employees but for anybody that subscribes to it. Well, and I, uh, on that note, I think Intero is that's one of the the ways they set themselves apart from other companies is that they care about their their people. employees and their people's lives outside of business. Yep. Business is important, of course, but caring about the F, the F, explain F5. the F5. Yeah, so F5, so, you know, one of the things I've, you know, you know, so we talk about faith, family, friends, fitness, and finance, and how those need to be the priorities in your life, typically in that order. Yeah. Uh, not typically, in my opinion, they always need to be in that order, but, <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, the reality of it is we are in a, you know, our widget in the real estate business is the value of us. It's certainly the brand and image of Intero and, and the tools and resources that we provide, but it's the quality of the people that we have working for our company, people like you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we know that for, you know, for you to provide the best possible service to your friends, family, customers, and people out there that you're doing business with on a day-to-day basis. It's just not what you, just what you know. Absolutely. You yeah. know, um, it's the whole package. It's the whole package. Yeah. It's like, hey, you know, are you delivering it with energy? Are you optimistic and positive? Are you getting up early? Are you, are you paying attention to the details, right? Yeah. You know, um, all of those things ultimately, which at the end of the day, you know, is my belief as the CEO of Intero is what, what sets us apart from being, to being able to provide you know, our buyers and sellers, the very best quality of service out there in the industry. It's, you know, it's, it's not just the training. It's just not, hey, how do you know the contract? It's not just marketing. You know, I'd like to think that we have the best people yeah. from top to bottom in all those equities of their life. And because we have best people, that's ultimately going to give them the best service. Absolutely. Totally agree. And talking about the best people and um, our brand, we just came out with a couple of videos yeah. about branding and teams and talk about that a little bit. Well, so, you know, um, you know, when markets are hot like they are right now, there's yeah. like every every sort of model starts coming into the market. And there's been a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of um, buzz in the market over the last several years about teams. And, and you know, we've not been one to really promote market teams, yeah. although, we, you know, I was, I was pointing out to our leadership team, I mean, we have some of the most successful teams in the real estate industries that have ultimately built real estate companies inside of real estate company right, inside yeah. of Intero. 
And, um, you know, I'd be the first to say that I don't think it's the best thing for most people. You know, Absolutely, um, yeah. you know I think that you need to be, you know, you, your business needs to be at a point that, you know, the volume of business that you're doing is so great that you need the help and support to take it to that next level. And if you do, you know, I and mean, we have, you know, David Troyer did over $300 million in real estate sales with us last yeah. year. 300 guys million. Amazing. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, so we have guys that are really, you know, and ladies that are big movers and shakers in that. And so um, certainly support. So we created these videos to kind of just hopefully be able to help agents, um, you know, understand, hey, should I start a team? Shouldn't I start a team? What are the qualities that yeah. um, that I need to be aware of when I start a team? And then kind of went off into the value of brand and image. Again, in our business, um, you know, it, it just it is what it is. There's lots of egos, and people yeah. tend to, um, you know, shy away from the brand and image of the company that they work for, which I think is a catastrophic mistake. Yeah. Um, certainly, an agent's own personal brand and image is incredibly important, you know, um, but the brand of Intero and the image of Intero, if you don't take advantage of the millions of dollars that we've spent you know, creating that brand and image in the eyes of the consumer to you know, enhance your own personal brand, you're making a mistake. And a lot of brands out there, you wouldn't even know what company these agents work for, and they'll actually sell as a benefit. And I would, I would argue that it's an, and it's an incredible drawback. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and me coming, I've been in Terrell for over four years now, coming from my own little company before that. So I've seen the stark difference, right? Yeah. And, and of course, people are always going to hire you for you and your yep. integrity and that type of thing. But at the end of the day, too, Knowing that you have that brand behind you and and the quality of all the marketing and and all the tools that you have access to, it's really important. It's important to provide the best service possible um, to a buyer or seller. So I yep. think it's it's huge and definitely check those videos out. We got to take a quick break. We're going to wrap the show up on the other side. Tom Tognoli, the CEO of Intero Real Estate Services, is in studio today. Happy to have him. I'm Mike D'Ambrosio. And- 